Hello everybody, my name is Larry Thaler and I'm the CEO of the Video Call Center. What I want to do today is to convince you that the smartphone is going to change our industry. But I don't want to convince you that the smartphone is going to change the industry like you think. I actually think it's going to change the way we bring in news and the way we create content as opposed to the way we consume content. And I'm hoping you give me the chance to convince you of that. Okay, so let's start with some business about the industry, and our industry is certainly in dramatic change. And thank you to Tom Walzine for sharing this, con this uh, concept with us. When I first saw this chart, I was blown away. This is the revenues for the top 13 companies in our industry. Um, and if you notice enormous consolidation at the top, that, is, that shouldn't be a surprise to you. And what's really interesting here is poor Disney is in fifth place. Netflix is at the very right. It's only a dot drop in the pocket. And you look on the left and who are the players here? It's AT&T and Verizon. And you would say, well, they're telecom companies. They're not media companies. But the truth of the matter is they are media companies. Um, AT&T bought DirecTV and they're in the delivery business. Verizon has Fios. And so they're, they're more than just the telco players. They're actually expanding. AT&T has talked about announcing buying Time Warner, and you can see what that does to the chart. And of course, Verizon has already talked about some overtures about buying other companies. So this is an industry in consolidation, and to me, an industry in consolidation means that the industry is not growing. It means that the industry itself is going through some internal turmoil, and this should be obvious for you. Another look at this, Let's look at the revenues in television. So the, the chart here, the blue bar at the bottom is the inflation rate between 2010 and 2016. And you can see it ran at 1.6 annual percentage rate. Um, local television, when you subtract out inflation, was actually worse than being flat during that time. And even national television only grew at 1.93%. One, one um, and the thing that's important to realize here is as that was going on, a third of that increase was the population growth. 0.7% was population growth. So there is not a lot of growth in this industry. And if you want to see why, look at the purple bar across the top. The average air daily viewing for people two and over from 2010 to 2016 goes from over, over five and a half hours to well under five. Um, so there's a decline in viewership which is pressuring our revenues, but the cost of producing programming is still going up, something has to give. And what we need is creative solutions about how to innovate in our, in our industry, create new programming for lower cost. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So a chart that's going in a completely different direction is the smartphones worldwide. Smartphone usage, of course, is growing Tremendously, there's over 4 billion smartphones in existence in the world right now. Um, a lot of them are here in the United States, but you can see how the blue bar there, which is Asia, and the yellow bar down at the bottom, which is Middle East, are the areas of growth coming up. According to Ericsson, we'll have 6 billion smartphones by 2020. A big number of smartphones. And so most of us think about the smartphone as a device we need to deliver content to. Um, everybody's talking about TV anywhere, the ability to be able to watch what you want, when you watch it, how do we serve millennials, and the interesting thing here is if you look at these charts on the left, TV viewing of the bars on the left, the smartphone viewing is all the way those bars in the middle of the screen, so the, the 55 and the 67. And we see that smartphone usage and viewing is growing, but off of a very, very small base when you compare it to the television viewing, and you do see the television viewing year over year, 15, 16 to 15, is actually going down. Uh, so, so it's important to know that smartphones are being used for content of adoption, but there's also a way we can co-opt them. And going back to our charts about the smartphone, these are the subscriptions worldwide. And the green bar is LTE, and I want you to focus on LTE because LTE is the first level of delivery of a cell phone that can actually give you good live video quality. And what's happening is we have more than two and a half billion smartphone 
4G subscriptions worldwide, and by 2020, that's supposed to go to almost 9 billion. The other thing that's happening is 5G is coming, and it's really debatable about when it will actually be rolled out. But the, the real question is, how are we preparing for it? So look at the bandwidth for 4G. 100 meg to a gigabit per second, depending on who your carrier is and what technology they're using. The 5G is at least 10 times that and maybe 100 times that. So the smartphone is being connected at a greater rate in the future than it is now and maybe just a couple of years in the future. So let's talk a little bit about smartphones as ENG devices. Well, a smartphone has a camera, of course. It has a microphone. It has a video screen. But it also has things that your satellite truck and your live view unit doesn't have. It's got a return video signal. It has return audio. It will give you GPS location. It has an IP connection, and you can give it a live tally. All of these things are really simple. But let's come, and, and, and as a result of all of this capability, all sorts of services are popping up to allow the smartphone be, to be used as citizen news gathering. So examples are uh, Fresco's uh, deal with Fox News to deliver content for their TV stations group, um, or, or one of these other services. They're all trying to tap the citizen journalist. But let's take a more deep comparison. So if we look at satellite trucks, Satellite trucks are wonderful, we've used them for years, they're very, very valuable and very important. But think about their very high cost, the connectivity to get to a satellite and to get it on site is very long. Think about the fact that the latency is very long and that there's a huge investment in technical people on the remote side. Okay, so, but you say, okay, we have live view units. Live view units are better on the capital investment, but they still have long lead, long latency times, if you're trying to have a two-way conversation, if any of you have experienced the reporter in the field shaking his head up and down, waiting for the question to answer in his ear, we call those the yada yada yadas, right? You notice that that live view isn't really capable of having a two-way conversation. But the smartphone can work at really low latency. The smartphone can be 100 milliseconds or less. It has almost zero cost. The bandwidth cost is very low or almost zero. There's no capital investment. The users, every user in the world knows how to use their smartphone, and most people know how to point the picture at themselves because they've been busy taking selfies for the last three years. On top of that, there's a two-way return video feed that's low latency so you can create conversations across the planet between correspondents in different places between your host in your studio and the people in the field, and most available, most importantly, it's available on demand where you need it. You don't have to send a crew. So some, some ideas here, if, we were used, if we're gonna use the uh, mobile phone in the traditional way, we would take the place of a satellite truck or a live view unit and send it out to a scheduled event. Reporters, politicians, uh, a fire scene we might send it out to, and that's all well and good, and, but we have really good tools for that today. There are booked, booked viewers, book, book callers. We might be able to book up a line with them, um, but with a, with a cell phone, we can get these folks in their cars, in their hotel rooms, and we at the Video Call Center actually brought somebody in from her rehab clinic last week. Try getting a crew into a rehab clinic. I challenge anybody to do that, right? She found the Wi-Fi hotspot, she took her phone out, and she's on the air. It was that easy. And then you just take this and you say, okay, if we make this open to anybody who wants to call in, these can now be my viewers expressing their opinions live on the air, asking my experts their questions that they have, interacting with other viewers, interacting with musicians all over the world. These, this is what we're doing. And these viewers can be anywhere, of course. So mobile phones can absolutely change the game for the type of television our industry can create. But it's not easy. It's hard, and a lot of people who have tried to do this have failed. People who try to use Skype tell me there's a 40% failure rate on those phone calls, right? We need tools, and some of the issues are quality control, handling the volume of calls. How do I filter all these people who are coming in? I'm being overwhelmed with them. How do I handle editorial control so only the people I want are on the air at one time? What do we do about identifying people once they get on the air? How do we know who they are? How do we communicate with them? 
You know, I use mixed minus IFBs to communicate with my satellite truck remotes. Why can't I do that with my phone remotes as well? And there's this huge intermix of formats. How do we how do we pull that all together? So the challenges are huge. But what the video call center specifically does is we provide a toolkit to make all of those things happen. And I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes going through that toolkit for you. But what we are doing is we're connecting this infinite number or almost infinite number of smartphones that are accessible and give us options all over the world into your production where and when and how you need it while you're maintaining editorial control. And this is what our flow looks like. The red box are callers using applications wherever they are, applications already on their phone, nothing to download. They will join a show by clicking on the show's website or going to a hyperlink or clicking on something on a Facebook Live feed. And they will be prioritized in a queue. We think about this as a green room in the cloud and it's infinitely scalable and it allows us to prioritize all of the callers who may be calling in for this particular show. Once they're in that queue, they can be screened by a caller, a call screener from anywhere they are. Their framing can be adjusted, their lighting can be adjusted, they can take a photo of themselves. All of that is presented to the producer. The producer knows what questions they want to ask, they know their names, they know whether they've called in before. Lots of information to help them prioritize who these people are. And then they're editorially screened by a real live human being. And that human being will help them to optimize their connection, make sure they're wearing clothing, um, and to make sure that their content is, is content that we want to use. One, until they're cleared by a screener, nobody on the production crew even knows they exist. You can't accidentally put them on the air. And then we can feed the screen calls either to a traditional control room or to a host control system with no control room at all. Effectively, we've exploded the control room, put control in charge, of the host in charge of control. The producer doesn't necessarily have to be where that person is. The call screener doesn't have to be where that is. You're doing virtual production from all over the world. So it's efficient, reliable production. So we just did uh, 37 episodes of a show we called The Tea. Um, we had uh, 347 callers during that time, and during that time, we lost one call on air and one call froze on air. Try that with any other solution. We have a process and we have technology to make these calls reliable. But you want safety, and so we have layered safety. The first thing is, when a caller comes in, they're signing a legal document in the caller queue that we keep track of, which is your release. You have the right to use them on the air, they confirm that they're going to behave a certain way. We've got that all documented. There's a legal document. And, you know, people don't often look at their legal documents, but you have something to go after somebody if they do damage to you. The second is we have the pre-screen capability. We can get to know who they are. We can see a photograph of who they are. We have a live call screener. We can ask them for ID if it's really necessary. We have their GPS address. We know where they're calling from. We have a kill switch. Once they get on the air, everybody on the team can take somebody off with the push of a button. And last but not least, least we just announced a product called Bleep It. Bleep It allows us to put the horses back in the barn after they've left. It's the first ever censored away for, for, for internet television with internet economies. So instead of buying a many thousand dollar a year box, you can, you can use this service as part of, part of our system with very little additional cost. So it's not just about news. We talked about ENG and news gathering, but we can do shows, celebrity talk shows, game shows, um, politics and investigative reports, entertainment, music, uh, sporting programs, live interaction with fans. Um, all of this has been done. So the question is, what can you do, what can your organization do when connectivity is free and frictionless, when you can bring in people from anywhere they are on the devices that already exist in the field and bring them on to the air with your program? And the answer is, what can be created with the VCC? It's an entirely new genre of television. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here.